Next up on our virtual consigner tour, we are going to Mark Grant's yard in Lambourne, where he is prepping a racy gelding for the Tattersall's Ascot sale, which is combined with the Craven sale in Newmarket, where the horses will breeze on the 22nd of June and the sale is going to take place on the 25th of June. Mark, I think we can just start by asking you to tell us a little bit more about yourself for anybody who doesn't know you from the sales already, for anyone who hasn't met you before. Um, just a little bit on your background, please, I suppose, to start with. Well, I've spent the last uh, 20 years as, as a national hunt jockey um, between <laughs> Ireland and England. And um, then we've, we've started the breaking pre-training yard in Lambourne, um, which, which is going quite well. And, and then this is our third year consigning breeds of horses. So um, we started off consigning horses for an owner the first year. And then last year we bought our own. We had three of our own, which went quite well. And this year we bought seven. So we've, um, we've, tr we've tried to build it up every year. Um, and hopefully this year can go well and we can build, build on it again next year. Yeah, so quite a switch, I suppose, or a change of pace, at least, from the jump racing to breeze-ups. Uh, do, do you find this side of the industry is as enjoyable as your racing career on the track? I do. Obviously, I love, I love riding, and, and um, it's, it's a great buzz when you ride a winner, and there's nothing like it. But, you know, I, I enjoy doing this as well. I love going to yearling sales and, and buying yearlings, and I have a big interest in... Uh, in pedigrees and, and two-year-old sires and, and, and two-year-old races. So I, I get a good buzz from that as well, you know. And you talk about going to the sales and um, you're sort of building year on year and a variety of numbers increasing as the years have gone on. Um, how have you found the breeze up world in general? Have you have there been any sort of learning curves along the way that you weren't expecting or has it all been pretty smooth sailing? You're learning every day, you know, when, when you go to the sales and even when you're going to buy horses and when, and when you're going to sell them, you're learning every day and, and you just try and watch how other people do it and, and um, you know, you pick up something from the sales every day, I think, you know, um, on, how, on, how, on how other people turn the horses out or how they, how they breeze and you, I just, every time I go to a sale, you, you're learning something different. Yeah, I can see that. I, I'm exactly the same, to be honest. And it's continually surprising me, um, kind of the competitiveness of the Breeze Up game. And for me, um, the shrewdness of some of those operators. It's it's a shrewd man's game, I think. Do you find that? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And if you just watch, watch the, the big consigners and, and how they turn their horses out, as I said, and, you know, and even the lads that get to ride them and that, it's just... You just you just learn learn the whole time if you, if you keep watching the right people you know yeah absolutely and um just bringing it back again focusing on this year of course it's a complete exception to the rule very different um we're all having to overcome various hurdles at the moment but just when you when did you first realize that the covid19 situation was be going to become a major problem for the breeze up industry when did you first start to maybe not panic but worry <laughs> Um, I suppose we kind of had it in our heads, like just after Cheltenham, that this could be a problem. But we were always hoping that sales might go on behind closed doors with, without changing dates, you know. But then, you know, when, when the lockdown came in, we knew that we weren't even sure if sales were going to be on at all. And uh, we were just hoping that they were going to be on. But at least now we've got a date and we're, we're able to work towards that. Yeah, and focusing in on that date... Um so the third week of June, so towards the end of June anyway, once you've got that date or that sort of general area of time in the diary, is it then much easier for you to sort of refocus your energies and the horses onto that specific day? Exactly, yeah, because we had to back off them. They were all ready to go in April um, when the sales were meant to be on. And, and then obviously we had to stop for a month and just keep them ticking over. And um yeah, we've, we've, we've obviously got them back on again now and we're, we're aiming towards the um, third and fourth week of June. So, yeah, they're, they're nearly ready to go now. 
Yeah, exciting times again, I suppose. And it feels like we're coming out of the darkness a little bit. Um, hopefully it can continue on this positive sort of vein we're on. Um, just in terms of the last few months, what have been some of the main challenges? How's your staffing situation been? Or I don't know what your yard setup's like in Lambourne. Have you been able to continue in pretty much how you were going in the lead up to April? Yeah, we've been continuing away fine. The freezer process obviously are going and we had um, we had pre-trainers and breakers in prior to this ha all happening, but most of those have gone now back to their owners or back to the trainers because they obviously didn't want to have them in with me when there's no racing on. Mm. So we just mainly had a couple of couple of um, pre-trainers and, and our breezer process. So we've, we've only had 10 or 12 in during, during all this, but... Um, We've been we've been lucky with the staff that they were able to stay with me and keep everything going. So yeah, we've been lucky in that sense. And what's your yard like in Lambourne actually? Do you do you use the shared gallops with the breeze ups or do you have your own? No, so we use the um the, the jockey club gallops, so which we're lucky we can Yeah. There's there's a wood chip gallop that's seven furlongs that with a gradual incline that's that's close to the yard so we can use that for um our day to day work and then if we need to go to the other gallops, then we can box them over and bring them over to um, the main gallops on Mandown in Lambourne. Which is, um, we're very lucky. The facilities are brilliant here in Lambourne. So um, it's a great place to train horses. Yeah, I suppose for the breeze ups, it's a bit of a privilege for them in a way to have such a variety of gallops to use at such a young age. They don't just get used to the same patch. Exactly. And they see a lot going on. You know, when, when they go to the sales, then they're not phased by anything because they see strings going out every morning and they see white railings and you know it's like being at the races really you know they see they see everything yeah, yeah absolutely um and then i suppose what are you realistically expecting going into these this breeze up sale season in this completely different way i mean we can all try and put a positive spin on it and i guess we will all try to put a positive spin on it but realistically is it a year of survival or do you still hope and think that the cream of the crop at the very least will sell well? The economy is unknown, isn't it, for, for this year now, but I think that, that the top end of the market will hold its own and the nice horses will sell. And, you know, then I suppose the, the middle, the middle to, to, to the bottom end are just going to struggle a bit maybe, but um, the, the nice ones are going to sell and um, people still have to buy horses, don't they? I'm sure there's still going to be trainers and agents with orders so whether yeah. whether they're going to be a lot cheaper or not i don't know but um. yeah the wheel keeps turning do you think um for you guys the resumption of racing as early as the first of june has to have kind of have a knock-on effect i feel for the breeze up sales season because it's kind of that optimism is still there we're back watching two-year-old racing at newmarket today and the dream is very much back on on the go do you think that'll help the industry in terms of the breeze ups Great help, yeah, great help. The racing starting back has been a big help to us and um, and owners, obviously, who, who want to buy a horse. You know, if racing is back on, it's going to get get them focused back on it again. And I think there were six two-year-old races today at Newmarket, wasn't there? So it was... Um, um, what all, people watching that is going to be, obviously, a big help towards the sales, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. We can probably move on and talk about uh, the horse you've got going to Tassels, the Estigdar um, individual you've got there. I'm looking at the video here. Real racy individual. Tell us a little bit. He's a nice, yeah, Estigdar. He's a nice horse. We got him at, um, we got him at the Sportsman Sale, Goffs, um, Ireland. He's, um, yeah, he's a lovely horse by Estigdar out of an approved mare. Great way of going. He's very precocious. Um, Good stride on him and very straightforward. Um, we actually gelded him, gelded him six weeks ago, um, because I just thought the way racing had gone with no racing on. Um, if a trainer bought him tomorrow, he was ready ready to rock and roll next week. You know they wouldn't have to wait another month to geld him again. So I thought that it just might help him to for somebody to latch onto him. Um, yeah, but he's very straightforward and goes well. His half brother actually. This guy's a second fold, so the first fold, the half brother, is by acclamation, actually won in Qatar last week, so that's a nice update for the page. And and he's he's actually got a good page, so we we like him. And where where did you buy him from? What's his backstory? We bought him from Goffs, the sportsman sailing Goffs, Ireland. Um, yeah, 
he um yeah we brought him back here then and broke him and you know we, he was meant to go to the Ascot sale which was on the first of April and I thought he was the earliest one I had he was very precocious and he was tailor made for that sale I think but obviously two month delay now hasn't helped him but it hasn't seemed to phase him he's he's still he's tough and genuine and he gallops um he's a very straightforward horse. And with a horse like him then, um, obviously you mentioned how precocious he was early on. Um, was he pretty straightforward to do everything with? Was he kind of a professional individual? Very professional. He lead the string every morning. Um, he's one of those that never looked at anything straight as an arrow. Um, that's, that's why I thought him going to Ascot would have been, you know, he'd been well ahead of the rest. Well, well, well ahead of the rest of mine anyway, you know, he was just very straightforward. Um, but um, I, I don't think it's going, it's going to hinder him too much, you know, having, having a two-month break or whatever. But, um, yeah, he, as, as I said, he, he, he's ready to run next week, you know. He's I guess us. for a horse like him, when the sales did get pushed back and you knew you had him ready for the 1st of April, were you in any way nervous about sort of laying off him at all, or did you think that he'd be fine with whatever happened to him? I thought he'd be fine, and hence why we gelded him. And he obviously had a couple of quiet weeks then when he was gelded, and you know he was back into work. Then after that, a couple of weeks, he was back into work, and he took it very well. Um, back cantering, and he's now back doing his bits of work once a week, and. Yeah, he just takes everything in his stride. Very good constitution, and good mind, you know. Yeah, lovely. And on a more general level, for all your breeze up horses and all the two year olds you have through your hands, kind of just run us through what their training program would be from when you get them in and break them. And do they have a holiday just in a normal year, just out of interest? Yeah, well, we obviously get them September, October and break them. And we spend a month, five weeks then just trotting around we've got we've got a school a menage where we just trot around and do figures of eights and we spend a couple of weeks in there doing that and then we gradually get them down to the gallop where they'd have a couple of hacks and a canter and we'd spend yeah another two or three weeks doing that and getting them going up sides and that and then we would um back off them then for a month i, I like to give them a month quiet where they just go on the walk or have a lunge or um Unfortunately, I don't have anywhere that I could just turn them out in the field okay. and leave them. So we just back off them for a month. They're in their boxes on the walker or lunge or whatever, but we don't ride them for that month, basically. Um, I like to give them a quiet time then. And then kind of after Christmas, we get going again and get back riding and back cantering. And, and then you start to try and teach them to see if they can go a bit quicker. <laughs> <laughs> see if they can yeah and just with that going a bit quicker sort of this how how much how many pieces of work so to speak would you do with them how often would you take the handbrake off with these breeze up horses depends on the individual you know you can you've got some of them that are very natural and will you don't need to teach them a lot anyway and um, with the likes of those you know you could you'd probably do four or five bits and they, they, they learn very quick. But then if you've got a backward type that needs a lot of teaching or a lot of grabbing hold of them, pulling together, you might have to do a couple of more bits or maybe just take them away a bit more so you'd see a bit more. But I don't gallop them that much. I wouldn't gallop a horse every week. You know, it'd be every couple of weeks maybe or or if that, you know. Whenever, whenever I thought they needed it, as in it wouldn't, yes. be a root, it wouldn't be a routine that we'd gallop them once a week anyway. It, it'd just be as and when I thought, I thought they'd need to do it. And so going forwards then for you, you've obviously, we've sort of spoken about how the year might be this year, but just in terms of your setup, is, is the dream to keep growing, to do a little bit more of this, to buy a few more yeah, this year? Definitely, yeah. We'd like, I'd like to build every year and try and buy more. Um, I'd like to have 10 next year if we could, depending on, depending on if we can sell these ones this year. But um, yeah, we'd like to build every year and, Eventually, the aim is to move home to Ireland and, and, and set up in my parents' place in Tipperary. And um, we'd like to do it from there eventually. Well, look, brilliant. And thank you very much for talking to us. Best of luck with not only your Ascot horse, horse, but, you know, the rest of the year as well. Hopefully, we will see you at the yearling sales. And, yeah, the best of luck to you. Thank you very much.